welcome back. We are discussing a paper on India's statistical system and the myriad problems with it and how to set it right, written by Pramit Bhattacharya for the Carnegie Endowment. Uh, I've been speaking with the author of the report, Pramit Bhattacharya, former Dep acting chairman of the National Statistics Commission, Dr. Mohanan, and uh, independent economist uh, of the Overseas Development Institute, uh, Ratan Roy. Gentlemen, thank you uh, for your patience. Well, uh, Dr. Mohanan, uh, you know, before I come to the pressure that may come from financial markets asking for cleaner data, I wanted to ask you, what about administrative data that's already available? Now we have GST. Uh, you know, which gives fairly micro level data and not just as macro as direct taxes would be. Do you think that can be harnessed uh, uh, in a way? Of course, we have to set the statistical system in order, but can that replace to some extent the lack of data? Well, GST is supposed, I mean, we expected GST provide a lot of answers to the, uh, especially when it comes to the services sector and other things. But so far, the GST data has not been in public. Uh, it has not been given access to the public. No, so one and unit has been given, uh, sir. One unit. A little, you know. The account Kerala aggregators. Bunga, the account aggregators yeah. were allowed to use GST, and I don't know whether they've actually been using it. But the in principle nod was given. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. So in Kerala, I've been you know, the GST department in Kerala. They've been quite uh, helpful, and they've promised to help me because I'm now looking out to the Kerala State Statistical Commission. Oh. And everybody has a stake in this, especially because the GSTP is one of the key uh, indicators and the borrowing limit is set as the 3% of GSTP. So the accurate estimation of GSP, GSTP is in everybody's interest. Mm. And that is why the government has taken a lot of interest in that. We have been holding several meetings and workshops to look at how to improve the state income estimation. So there is the, there are alternative uh, sources of data, but these are not very transparent. Other than GS, uh, GST, the government has large number of administrative data. Most of them are coming out, you know, in the form of dashboards. You know, you, you open any ministry, you get a dashboard, and uh, these dashboards are just black boxes. You know, you don't know what is inside the thing. And the, then the question comes of metadata. How do you link this data with the other data sets? Mm. Uh, it, that applies to GST also. Mm. Uh, GST has a registration. There's a, there's a number given to each of these units. How do you link these uh, registered uh, units to with another data set? Mm. Same applies to other administrative. All of them have their own different standards for uh, district courts, state courts, industry courts, registration numbers. So none of these administrative data are interlinked or they don't talk to each other. That is the biggest issue mm. uh, apart from the access to the data. Even if they give access to the data, it would be a very Herculean task to bring them together and to find out what is what and what extent they are complete. Now, we don't okay. even know how many, what percentage of units are registered for GST. Okay. Okay. No, that will not be difficult to find out if there is, a, you know, a mind put to it. It's just that it's anyway getting uh, collected. Uh, uh, Ratin, I wanted to ask you if external pressures can mount. Uh, you know, China plus one is one big reason why one hopes there will be more foreign involvement in uh, Indian economic development, either by of VCs and uh, private equity uh, or direct FDI or even a foreign portfolio. The pressure that we want clean data can come from outside, you think? I don't think so. And the example before us is China. China's statistical system is, high, is widely acknowledged to be less than perfect uh, and perhaps not even very good and intentionally. So there's an intentionality where the Communist Party uh, sort of looks at Chinese data and uses it in ways that perhaps foreign investors will not find congenial. They've been okay with that. Uh, they, similarly, in India, they do foreign admit investors are not interested. <laughs> They've admitted that their GDP is very low. I mean, uh, 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 is it still considered doctored? They have admitted it's 3% or 2% or even negative. Yes, yeah, still, look, it's been, there have been controversies about Chinese data for many years. Of course. And it's okay. I, I'm just responding to the point about foreign investors. Foreign investors don't care about how good or bad your data is. They mm -hmm. want to make some money. So if I'm able to sell them and their client, for example, ANC companies or private equity firms here, I've been telling them for some time that the India story may be broken, but your story is bright. Mm -hmm. What data do I need to use for that? I need to show them that the government is broke and therefore if it is competent, it will disinvest in large measure. There'll be some good deals to pick up there. And then they want to know how district companies will be able to increase profits. That is the narrow universe of data they're interested in. And that is the narrow universe of high frequency data and GDP they're interested in. Okay. Okay. So they're not going to be sort of looking for 
data that is very important for public policy purposes, mm. but not, not necessarily for investor purposes. Okay. In short, there has to be a constituency mm. that is willing to engage with complexity. Mm. And foreign investors are not interested in this complexity. Okay, the tragedy yeah. in India is that our policymakers too have now become disinterested in complexity. Okay. And if you're not interested in addressing complexity, you're not going to be interested in good data. Okay. One hopes uh, uh, the educated class, the universities, researchers uh, will be able to throw up some uh, opposition or some interest in this. Uh, Pramit, uh, let me try and fit in two questions here. One, you know, it's not just GSTN. We are throwing up a large amount of digital data. I mean, there's uh, lending, payment systems, NPCILs, I mean, uh, UPI. A whole host of data footprint is available. Uh, do you think we can perhaps leapfrog and improve uh, data by other means of collecting it? So I wouldn't want us to frame this as either this or this. Both of this have to go together, and that's what all countries have done. If you look at the U.S. Census Bureau, they do hundred more than 100 surveys every year, including many business surveys. The reason is very simple. You get standard data from administrative sources, which are designed with regulatory, regulatory intentions in mind, with bureaucratic intentions in mind. And there is a certain level of respondent burden you can put on firms across the economy. If you want more detailed data or very specific kind of granular sort of information, it is not advisable to put that field in an administrative form. Rather, you do a survey and figure that out. Secondly, in a country with a large informal sector like India, you will always have to rely on surveys for that part of the economy. It's basically outside the formal way. Thirdly, even once you get this together, how you do it is very important. Mm. See, even MCA 21 was a step forward when it came to integrating an administrative data set into the national accounts. Yeah. But in the process of doing it, you moved from an establishment uh, database to an enterprise level database without knowing how they map each other. Oh, you yeah. couldn't figure out how to allocate it across sectors, across states. You then had to fall back on ASI, which is your legacy data, without having a link between ASI and MCA. Mm. And just finally, uh, Maharashtra uh, government uh, uh, state statistical bureau, which is one of the better bureaus in the country, they had initiated a pro project and have a detailed project plan of integrating data from seven different mm. ministries, mm. including GST, including the uh, uh, Consumer Affairs Ministry, because the Shops and Establishments Act come there. And one of the, my sources told me that this covered almost. 80% of at least the urban enterprise in Maharashtra. It would have been a rich database. And it took them months and months of negotiation between different departments to just get this started. And then the government changed. So this again oh. got delayed. And even after it is set up for the data to flow, to sort of get all these things evened out and to find out a common sort of sharing this thing, it, 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 is, it requires resources and time and continuous monitoring so that okay. even when regu regulations change. So you need a <laughs> yeah. dedicated sort of... Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, that. Pramit, I know you put your heart and soul into it and you have a lot to say. Unfortunately, out of time. Uh, Mr. Mohan, in just 10 seconds, sir, uh, you know, do you think that uh, because the government is now back in industrial policy mode all over the world, actually, including ours, I mean, PLI and all our proactive government policy uh, making, do you think they could get interested in clean data? Yes, I have no other view other than that, you know, government will be interested. This cannot continue, as okay. Promise rightly says, okay. we cannot allow this to continue. A decoding has been done. New codes have to be returned. Now, that new code somebody has to write now. And I'm sure government will okay. make efforts, if not yeah. today, tomorrow. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, in London, in England, in the United Kingdom, the uh, chief statistician has the same uh, autonomy and independence as the CAG, uh, one of the, uh, you know, constitutionally protected offices. So that's what we have to aspire to, perhaps to clean up the system. But as you say, uh, Mr. Mohanan, it's not just, uh, uh, you know, constitutional or governmental autonomy, it is also uh, the will to improve and the rot is too deep, or at least the incompetence is too deep, and we have to change it all. We have the talent. It's an excellent paper written by Pramit, uh, which in yes. just 35 pages encompasses both the history and the problems and likely solutions. Uh, I think uh, this can only whet your appetite uh, to read uh, an excellent paper and come up with solutions. Uh, that's my request to India's Society of Statisticians. Wrap up on this edition of Indianomics. Thank you for watching.